Well, uh, bid you a good afternoon, Nottingham. Uh, delight to be uh, in your midst again this afternoon. Bring the good news, glad tidings of the gospel to you once more. That uh, some of you, at least maybe, who knows, even one of you, might be brought to a knowledge of our Lord and Saviour, Jesus Christ, the only one, of course, who can save you, bring you to a knowledge of your Maker, redeem you, bring you back from the pathway of, uh, <coughs> of sin and, uh, and rebellion against uh, your Maker. We come to you uh, with the free grace of God, the free grace that uh, saves, saving grace of God, and of course, um, well, that brings uh, the free justification of God. That's how a body, in answer to that question that's uh, posed for us in the Bible, how is a man uh, justified uh, with uh, before God? <clears throat> and the answer to that question, of course, is, well, by grace, uh, through faith that is in Jesus Christ. That's uh, the only way, not by works and uh, not by anything you do, not by a person being a religious or religious activity. No activity of ours, none whatsoever, I can bring a person to God, bring them back from the dark path of sin. Faith and faith alone towards Jesus Christ and Him alone. So, um, we have Bibles here, we have New Testaments, uh, this here Gospel of John, uh, which is uh, an extract from the Bible, a good place to begin uh, reading the Bible if you've never read it before. You'd like to have a copy of God's Word in whatever form, feel free to come and ask for one, gladly place into your hands. Reading God's Word, of course, you read about Jesus, you read about my Saviour, the only Saviour, the only mediator between God and man. Reading the Bible, uh, people do come to a knowledge of salvation, so I recommend it to you. And of course, uh, well, if you have any questions, I don't have the answers to all your philosophical dilemmas, but I do have the answer to the most important question of all, and that is, how, uh, what must I do to be saved? And the answer is, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. And if you would like somebody to pray for you, then I would be more than happy uh, to do that for you also. God is a prayer answering God. He has pledged himself in his word, the Bible, to answer the prayers of those who call upon his name through faith in his son Jesus Christ. Only, only one, one way, you know, into the presence of God, one way to get God's ear, as it were, and that is through the name of his son Jesus Christ. <clears throat> the one name, the one name under heaven by which we must be saved and by which we must come to God not through some uh, fictitious being such as Allah, the God of Islam, the imaginary God of Islam, not through his mother, Jesus, the mother of uh, Jesus, Mary. Uh, such prayers never go higher than the ceiling. Only through Jesus, only through the Son of God, in his name and his name alone. Jesus himself, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. He says, no man comes to the Father but by me, one name only. So the word of God for you here today, a bit of a, a more serious, uh, solemn, if you like, uh, uh, message this afternoon uh, for you, Nottingham. We come to you with the love of God tell you about the love of God that he has for all mankind sinners, but you know, um, 
that is a serious side to it. God is love. That's uh, without question. Uh, but God is also holy. He is, uh, the Bible says, the thrice holy God. And he is a God who hates sin. The Bible says he hates workers of iniquity. The Bible says he's angry with the wicked every day. God is displeased with our sin. That's why he sent his only begotten Son into the world that through him that you might be saved. Saved from, well, the present wrath of God. For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all the ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, in wickedness, that is. So, like I say, um, more, than, uh, more than one attribute to God's name, he has many attributes, holiness, love, grace, kindness, all these things, but you need to take heed to them all. The entire character, nature, being of God. And he it tells us, you know, I speak to you of God's love, and uh, you don't want to know about it. I speak to you about God's wrath, you don't want to know about that either. So it matters not, it seems to me, nothing on how we come to you and how we present the gospel to you, uh, you're not to be entreated one way or the other. So I hope my prayer for you today is that uh, looking at the, the more serious side, that is uh, the wrath of God, and of course the punishment that is due to you for your sins that you will incur if you are not saved, if you do not repent, if you do not believe, if such is not given to you, then you face that penalty, you face that punishment yourself in all its fullness, even death. The wages of sin is death, that's the punishment, that's the penalty, you die, you forfeit life in this world, you go out of it, and no longer, no more, will you ever taste, will you ever look, will you ever feel everything, you die completely, totally, you're gone from this world. But then that's not the end of it, that's not the finish. After that then comes the judgment of God, then you stand before your maker. It is appointed unto man once to die, inescapably, marked on God's calendar. The year, the decade, the year, the month, the week, the day, the hour, the moment, when you will breathe your last and go out of this world, it's all marked on God's calendar. Maybe there's somebody under my sound of my voice here this afternoon, and today is your day. I don't know. Who would you be to, if God was to require your soul tonight, where would you be? Where would you spend eternity? Where would the end of you be? The lake of fire? Hell? Heaven? Who should it be? Two choices. Let me bring the gospel to you. Let me preach Jesus Christ to you. That's exactly what we're doing. We're setting before you two ways, two choices, two destinies, heaven or hell, life or death. Which will it be, Nottingham? Time to wake it up. Time to wake it up out of your slumber of death. Time to take these things seriously, because death is coming. It's a certainty, and the inevitability of God's judgment follows it. It is, huh? Not talking? Nothing to say? So as I say, friends, two choices. Well, the choice really is not yours. Jesus said to his disciples on one occasion, he says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. It's Jesus who does the choosing. It's whether he'll have you, not whether you'll have him. It's whether he'll call you. It's whether he'll call you effectually, that is, call you effectively, bring you to himself. Because only he can do that. Left to you, your choice, your choice will be sin every time. Your choice will be rebellion every time. Your choice will be no, 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 no. That's what your sin is. Your sin is no to God. And your continuance in sin is no to God, is rebellion. 
and God's wrath, God's wrath is only wrath and judgment upon you, even though presently is his mood to your sin. And the more you reject him, the more you turn your back on him, the more you apostatize from God, the more you carry on in your sin, well, the more he gives you over to that, and the more you're given over to his wrath, to his no. So today, today is time for change. Today, say yes to God, yes to his grace, yes to his love, yes to his favor, yes to his son, and say no to sin. Before you perish, before you go out of this world, before you breathe your last, before you die, before you close your eyes in death and awaken on the other side to the fearful, dreadful judge of all the earth who will, if you have not been reconciled to him, if you have not believed in the name of his only begotten Son, will cast you into the lake of fire, prepared not for men or women, but prepared for the devil and his angels. Will that be your end, Nottingham sinners? Or will you be reconciled to God? That's the call today. Be ye reconciled to God. How? In the way of repentance and faith. Repent ye and believe the gospel. For the kingdom of God is at hand. And that's how you enter God's kingdom. In the way of repentance and faith. Of course, by the grace of God, always, only, ever, by the grace of God. Not your strength, not your power, not your flesh. The flesh profited nothing. It's the Spirit who gives life. That's why Jesus says, you must be born again of the grace of God, of the Spirit of God. He must be born again, except a man be born again, he cannot see, perceive, understand the kingdom of God, enter into the kingdom of God. As one good bishop, if ever there was a good bishop, Mr. Ryle, his name, he said on one occasion, a long time ago, he's gone now, he said that, that if a man is not born again, that they will come when he will wish he had never at all. I hope and I pray nothing of sinners that won't be your end, that today by the grace of God that you might be born again and be brought to a knowledge of his grace, his love, his favor, his kindness, his son Jesus Christ, whom he sent to the world that through him that you might be saved, the only Savior, the only way back to God from sin's dark, dark, evil path. To be saved today, to know God today, to know eternal life, to know his son today, believe me, is a great, a wonderful, a wonderful privilege. Because you live, you live in a very evil generation, don't you know? Jesus was asked the question on one occasion, by his men, by his disciples, are there few saved? He didn't exactly answer the question, but the implication, well, the implication certainly today is, yes, yes, few there be that be saved. Not many. Make sure, Nottingham, make sure you're one of them. Call upon the name of the Lord. And the Bible says you shall be saved. So God's word for you today, if you like a copy of God's word, read for yourself. Like I say, come and ask for one. We have Bibles, New Testaments, Gospels. You're simply for the asking. What do God here taken from the very, very last book of the Bible? And the penultimate chapter, that means the last but one. Verse 15. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life, was cast into the lake of fire. The whosoever. Oh, the whosoever. Amen. The who. And that's a big whosoever. That's anybody, everybody and enemy born into this world. Amen. 
Your name needs to be written in the book of life. Whoever you are, whatever you are, whatever you come from, whatever your background, whatever your color, whatever your creed, whether you come from Afghanistan, Alaska, or anywhere else in between, your name in order to be here, to avoid the lake of fire, you must needs, you must needs, have your name written in the book of life. Whosoever. There's a lot of whosoever's in the Bible, don't you know? There's a whosoever that says, whosoever believeth on the Son, that is, shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Amen. Their names will be written in the book of life. And that's why they won't perish. But whosoever you are, whoever, whosoever you be, nothing of sinners, hear me today, whoever, whatever you are, whosoever you be, your name needs to be written in the, the Lamb's Book of Life. Amen. You see, there are some people, you know, they come from foreign parts. There are some people, you know, they come, they come to a country with, uh, uh, inverted commas, Christian country, they come to a country with all kinds of heathen, idolatrous religions. You know, the, the world's full of it. I just been to a country, you know, and they got they got religion on steroids, you know? They've got cults and sects there that, well, that you've never heard of. And there's probably, they probably invented a new one today. I wouldn't be surprised. Religion about, that the Oxford University Press tells me that there are 9,000, well, that was at the time of printing, 9,900 religions in the world today. There's probably another thousand been added since. Religion, religion abounds in your world today, you know, and, and, and people believe it. And why do they believe in all these different religions? Well, it's because they're rebels, you see. It's rebellion, because whosoever you be, you be a rebel, or, uh, you be in rebellion against God. I tell it to these false religions and false gods, so-called, it's rebellion against your maker. And some people will tell you, well, they're just looking for God in another way different to you Christians. No, no, no. It's rejection of the truth that God has revealed. Amen. It's rejection of his name, of his being. It's rejection of the true and living God. So whosoever of you you be, and whatsoever religion it is that you follow, well, you need to repent of it. You need to repent of the heart issue of your rebellion against God, against your maker, because that's what it comes down to. False idolatrous religion. Islam, Roman Catholicism, Buddhism, Confucianism, and every other ism that there is in the world today is plain simple rebellion against God, against your maker, just the same as is atheism. So whosoever you are, let me tell you, pray, let me tell you, the matter is very, very serious. Because your rebellion against God, you're turning to other ways, other religions, other names, trusting in them, trusting in yourselves, your own rationality, your own reason, yep. your own logic, as it were, trusting in all such trusting in everything and anything but the true and living God, the God of the Bible, the God and Father of my Lord Jesus Christ, there is no other God. And his first commandment is that thou shalt have no other gods before him. And to do so, whosoever you are, you be, and wheresoever you come from, to have any other God before him, it's plain, simple anarchy, rebellion against your maker, against the triune God, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yes. And so I call upon you today, first and foremost, whosoever you be, I call upon you today to repent, to turn, as God says, turn ye, turn ye, turn ye, said the Lord, why will ye die? when there is life to be had, when your name can be written in the book of life, when you can be safe and secure for time and eternity, when you can be right with God, with your maker, 
then you can be prepared for that day when you will step out of this world and into eternity and into the presence of the judge of all the earth. Today, Nottingham, sinners, wake up, wakey wakey, rise and shine out of your slumber of death and step into life, eternal life. Whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Whosoever believeth not, but rejects the Son of God, the salvation of God, shall not see life, but abide in death. Already, born into this world, born to life, or born to death, conceived and sin in your mother's womb, and then, of course, born nine months later in a state or a condition of death. Then your trespasses and sins, you come into the world shaping and sin and iniquity in a state, already in a state of death, alienated from God and alienated from the life of God. Friends, there is no life apart from God in Jesus Christ. To go out of this world in your sin is to never, ever, never have known what life is. Is to never, ever have tasted life. Amen. Death. Death becomes continual. Death becomes eternal. Death becomes everlasting. Never, ever to have known life because there is no life apart from God. Amen. But to come to Jesus Christ, whosoever believeth to come to Jesus Christ in faith, to receive the grace of God that is set before you and is freely offered to you this afternoon, is to receive life, to receive Christ, is to receive life. I am the way, the truth, and the life, he says. I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. How can that possibly be, you say? Because he has eternal life. That's how. Shall never die. My sheep may hear my voice, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never, never perish. Amen. Why? Because he's the author of life, the giver of life. Only he can give you life. To, to receive Christ, to believe in Christ, confide in Christ, is to receive life. But only in Christ, Nottingham sinners, only in Christ can you have that life. The peace, the joy unspeakable, every blessing that God has for a man, a woman in this world, in Christ, not out of him, not apart from him. Oh, oh you want to live. You want to live. You see the young people. I'm just in the beginning of my life, and I want to live it to the full, but you can't. You have no life in you, yet. Only in Christ. Many, many of you, uh, the older generation, my own, never tasted life, never know what Thank life you. is. Wasted every day, wasted every year that God has given to you. Walking in sin and rebellion against your maker and soon to be confronted with him and to be cast into the lake of fire unless you repent. Believe the gospel, come to Christ, receive Christ, and receive life today. Go to him. He'll give you life. He'll give you eternal life. He'll give you everlasting life. Never to see the lake of fire. Oh, today, today if you will hear his voice, harden not your hearts as many Many have done previously and many do today, even here in my midst here today, hardening your hearts. Gospel comes to you, a two-edged sword, the savor of life unto life and the savor of death unto death. Which will it be for you? Gospel comes to you, either softens and saves you or it hardens you. Which will it be for you today? A two-edged sword. Will it confirm you in your death sentence? Or will it bring life to your soul? 
What will it do for you today, Nottingham Senate? Whosoever, whosoever, that's everybody and anybody in this world. That, that, that's everybody and anybody under the sound of my voice here today. Listen up here, the Word of God, the infallible Word of God. Listen to it. His voice, not mine. His opinion, not mine. His decree. Whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. If your name is not in the book, that means you did not repent. That means you did not believe. That means you did not receive the love, the grace, the Son of God. That means you rejected. That means you continued on in your rebellion against your Maker, against God. And if your name is not written in the Book of Life, then you'll be cast into the lake of fire. Whosoever you be, whosoever you be, kings and, and priests, uh, religious men, unreligious men, rich men, uh, the Zuckerbergs and the Bezos, all the big money men, and all the celebrities with their fancy cars and their fa fancy houses. Huh? Their, name, their names are splashed over your newspapers and your internet day after day. You drool over them and you covet everything they've got and everything they have. Their names, their names splashed all over the media, but not in the book of life. And if not in the book of life, it's the lake of fire. That's the end of unbelief. That's the end of sin. That's the end of your rebellion against your maker. Waking up, Nottingham sinners. Waking up, I say. Waking up. Get out of that slumber of death and get yourself into life. Get your name written in the book of life. Like you could. <laughs> like you could. The author, the author of the book of life, well, there's only one. There's only one person who can, who can write your name in the book of life, and that's God himself, God and Jesus Christ. Your name has to be written in the book of life, and it has to be written there indelibly. It has to be written, not, in, not, not it's not ink and paper. It's not, it's not written with ink. It's written with the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. His blood shed on that cross. He came, he lived, he loved, he died. He rose again from the dead. What for? Take away your sin. Take away your rebellion. Take away your guilt. Take away your shame, your blame. Lift the curse of God from off of you. Take the wrath of God away from you. In love, God sent his son. In love, his son came and endured that and more, took the death that's yours, took the death that belongs to sinners so that they might live and to write their names in the book of life. That is when they trust in him. That is when they confide in him, put their confidence in him, that is. His person, his work, what he has done. The person of Jesus, the Jesus of the Bible, that is. Not the Jesus of Islam, not the Jesus of the Watchtower Society, not the Jesus of the Roman Catholic Church, the Jesus of the Bible, that person, him, the Son of God, the second person of the Holy Trinity, him, he, is putting your confidence in him and what he did. And what did he do? He lived and loved and died and rose again from the dead to justify sinners to include their names in the book of life. Because there's life in the blood, you see, in the blood of the Son of God. His death, life for you. His blood, your name, in the book of life. He's the author. He's the author of faith. He's the author of salvation. He must give it to you. He must give it to you in the grace of God. 
set before you, offered to you here this afternoon in Nottingham City Center, Son of God, Jesus Christ. Love, Son of God, so loved the world. Jesus so loved the world that he came and lived and loved and died. Amen. So that you might have life, eternal, everlasting. So that you might not die eternally, everlastingly. But on life and your name written in the book of life. Because if it's not in that book, but of course this goes back, does it not, to the before the world began. For God, for God, we were told that God as a people, chosen of himself before the foundation of the world, whom he gave to his son, and who in time draws to his son to believe on his son that they might be saved. God as a people, you see, the intention is not to save the world. The intention is not to save everybody. God has his own elect chosen people. And Nottingham sinners, I hope you're one of them. And the only evidence that you are one of them would be, of course, that you repent of your sin. That you turn from your rebellion. That you, you turn back to your maker. Did you call upon the name of his son, Jesus Christ? Amen. That's the old, that would be the only evidence that you're well of his. And that would be the only evidence that your name was written in the book of life. You say, well, how, how can I see this book? How can I read this book? You cannot. It's secret. It's secret, you see. It's, 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 it's in God himself. You can't read it. You say, well, how do I know? How do I know my name's written in the book of life? Well, well, tell me. I, I answer my questions. I, have you got life in your soul? Have you got the life of Jesus in you? Have you been born again? Have you repented of your sin? Have you believed in the only begotten Son of God? Answer my questions and I answer Amen. your question. How do I know if my name's written in the book of life, you say? How can I possibly know? Have you come? Have you come to the cross? Have you gazed there upon the bleeding Son of God, who in love gave himself for sinners? And have you seen through the eye of faith, have you beheld him, the Son of God, truly the Son of God, and if you beheld him dying for a sinner like you, and has it broken your heart, has it melted your heart, has it brought you to your knees, has it brought that cry out from, your, from your, the, the depths of your being, Amen. Son of God, Son of David, have mercy upon me. Well, has it? Answer my questions. Amen. Has it? And I'll tell you whether your name's in the book of life or not. But judging from your silence and judging from your carelessness, I don't think there's many here in Nottingham today who have their name in the book of life. But I tell you, my friends, solemnly, I warn you, I warn you, in love, I warn you, if your name is not written in the book of life, it's the lake of fire for you. Yes, the full, the final, the ultimate penalty. Death is not the end. Death does not bring closure. Oh, oh how you wish that it would, but you know it doesn't. No, after this then comes the judgment. Then there's the accountability. Then you answer to God, every thought, every word, every deed, your rebellion, your rebellious heart, your evil hearts of unbelief, you give account for it all. On that day when you stand before the judge of all the earth, then he will pronounce the sentence, the judge will, out of my sight, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. Depart to where? Where? 
the lake of fire, prepared for the devil and his angels, and those who follow them, those who hearken to them, listen to them, those who follow Satan, the devil, a murderer, and a liar from the beginning, says, my Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, my dear friends, wake it up. Face reality. Reality is the truth, not the lie. You follow Satan now, you believe the lie. God says in that, in the day that thou eatest thereof, thou shalt surely die. Rebellion against God's sin came into the world by one man, Adam. And that sin nature is passed on to natural generation, one generation after another, following, following, believing the lie of the devil, they shall not surely die. That was his first lie, and that's the lie, Nottingham sinners, that you live out of. You believe, and you live out of it. But the end of that is the lake of fire. All liars. Listen to God's word, will you? His word, not mine. The voice of God speaking to you here this afternoon. Listen carefully. But the fearful and unbelieving and the abominable and murderers and whoremongers and sorcerers and idolaters and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. If you are not born twice, you will die twice. If you are not born physically and then reborn spiritually, you will die twice. You will die physically and then you will die eternally, everlastingly. Cast into the lake of fire, which burneth with fire, night and day for all eternity, where the flames, the fires, are never quenched. Thus, whose names are written in the book of life, will enjoy the unquenchable love of God, a love that will never, never dissipate. A love that will never, never end. Everlasting life and everlasting love. For those whose names are written in the book of life. But not, not for those whose names are not written in the book of life. For then, the flames, the fires of hell, where even now presently, the Bible says, the smoke of their torment rises up forever, forever and ever, without end, a long, long time, when you've been there for a million years, still got eternity to go, in the lake of fire, the damnation of hell. That's why we come to you. That's why we're here today, in love, to warn you, tell you of the love of God, tell you of the salvation that's to be found in Christ, and in Christ alone, no other. Tell you the truth as it is in Jesus, because that's the only way you can be saved. That's the only way you can be kept from the lake of fire. No other way. That's what I'm here for, sir, to disturb you. Waking you up. Waking you up, sir. You don't need to make other people unhappy. If you do, you'll be shouting. I'm not shouting, sir. That's not shouting. It is. That's amplifying, sir. It's called amplification, sir. Good, good. Well, that's good to hear that there, eh? That's good. That's good. Sir, repent, believe the gospel, sir. Get on your knees, sir. Cry out to God, you have mercy on you. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. So as I say, friends, which I 
we can. We lift up our voices. We come out to you here regularly to warn you in love that you might escape such an end, such a catastrophic, tragic end as the lake of fire. If your neighbor's house, if your neighbor's house was ablaze, and they were asleep in bed unaware of the fact, what would you do? Well, what would you do if you loved your neighbor as God commands you to do? Well, you would do everything you possibly could to awaken them, would you not? You wouldn't just knock on their door. You wouldn't just shout and scream. You wouldn't just lift up your voice. You would kick the, you would kick the very door in. You would seek and try to drag them out of the flames. Lest they perish. Lest they die. If you love, if you loved your neighbor, that is. So in love, in love I come and I, I, I warn you. I tell you, tell you only what God says. If your name, if your name is not written in the book of life, cast into the lake of fire, that's your end. That's your end. Yes, sir. No, sir. No. And you're a nuisance to God, sir. The lake of fire. The lake of fire. That's the end of unbelief. That's the end of your godless life. That's the end of your unholy, unrighteous, ungodly life. But the good news, nothing on sinners. The good news is that Christ died for the ungodly. In the love of God. In the love of God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. And his Son so loved the world that he came and lived and loved and died. Not cross. Took the shame, took the blame, took the curse, took the wrath of God that you might escape. In the love of God that you might escape. Christ died for the ungodly. That's good news. For ungodly, unholy, defiled sinners. Very best, very, your, your very best efforts, God says, are like filthy rags in his sight. Alas, except you repent, you shall all likewise perish. Die in your sin. Last, eter last for all eternity. Listen up. And whosoever was not found written in the book of life was cast into the lake of fire. Damnation awaits you. The jaws of hell lie wide open, even presently, ready, ready to receive your soul. Accept that is except by the grace of God, except by the free grace of God, except by the love of God, He gives you ears to hear. He gives you a heart to receive, a heart to believe, unless He gives you a will to believe, a will to obey the gospel. Christ come, come sin comes quickly. The Bible says, comes again in flaming fire to take with his holy angels to take vengeance upon all that know not God and they will bring out the gospel. Believe me, nothing of sinners. There's something to be saved from. He's coming to judge the world in righteousness. Perfect righteousness, how will he find you on that day? Still unbelieving, still in your sin, still in your ungodly, still in your unholy, still in your filth, still in your uncleanness, still in your idolatry, still in your covetousness, still in your greed, still in your avarice. How will he find you when he comes? Nothing on sinners, still asleep. 
Stay asleep. Fast asleep. And wake it up in the lake of fire that burneth forever and ever and ever. Today I call I call upon you, God calls. Through his son Jesus Christ, be ye reconciled to God. Call of Jesus Christ. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Except ye repent, ye shall all likewise pray. God may command it all men everywhere. Whosoever, whosoever believeth shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Life, nothing of sinners. Life is set before you. Life is offered to you today. Eternal, everlasting life in Jesus Christ, but in Him alone, no other. No other good enough. No other good enough. Pay the price of sin. Open heaven's gate and let you in. Avoid the lake of fire. Turn from your sin. Turn from your rebellion. Believe, trust in Jesus. Today, nothing of sinners. Today, while you may know is the time, the accepted time, says God, it's the only time given to you. It's a day of grace, a day when you can be reconciled to God. Get it done, Nottingham. Get it done. On your knees, cry out to God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Plead with him. His mercy, his kindness, his love, his grace. Call whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved. You like to have the copies, I see, of God's written word. We've got Bibles, New Testaments, you've got this here Gospel of John. You'd like to read God's word to yourself. See, these things are so according to God's word. God bless you. God bless you. Read, study, meditate upon the person of God's Son for yourself. Like a copy of God's word, you come and ask for one. Amen. God bless you, Nottingham. God bless you and have mercy. Yes. Mercy, mercy, I say, upon your precious, precious, never dying soul.